In this lecture, we're going to get practical and populate Elasticsearch with some data. In the previous lesson, I gave an example of the vehicles index. We have three different types of vehicles, such as cars, motorcycles, and trucks, right? These are the different types. So now we'll take, a, we'll take that example further and load uh, certain documents into Elasticsearch. And by the way, uh, this lecture is going to be the last time you hear me use the word insert, okay? The process of inserting data into Elasticsearch has a special terminology, and that's called indexing, all right? So when I say uh, to index a document, that means to insert the document into Elasticsearch. So the word index is not only a noun, you know, representing a container of data, you know, the index uh, that contains data. It's also a verb, which means uh, to actually put data into an index, okay? So just uh, keep that in mind. So now let's go ahead and insert, whoops, I mean index a document into Elasticsearch. We'll need to define an index name as well as the type of document. So uh, if it's a car document we're indexing, then it will be associated with the car type. If it's a motorcycle document, it will be associated with the motorcycle type. And both of these types of documents will belong in the vehicle's index. Now the syntax to, uh, to index a document is this. We use the put command. This is an HTTP verb, such as get and post. After that, we specify the URL that we are uh, inserting into. Now using the tool, Kibana, we don't, need to we don't need to state the entire Elasticsearch URL. All we need is uh, just the index name, the type that we want to uh, insert, or index rather, and the ID of the particular document. After that, we have the actual document with the fields that we want indexed. Now, it's important to keep in mind that each document indexed into Elasticsearch better have a unique identifier. And this is very important, so we'll specify a unique ID for each document. If we don't specify an ID uh, for a particular document that we are trying to index, Elasticsearch will automatically generate an ID for us. But I highly recommend you provide a unique ID um, so that you, you're able to retrieve that particular document if needed. You want to be able to access particular documents where you can specify the ID to get them. So now let's, uh, let's fire up our handy-dandy Kibana uh, web browser tool to, to be able to interact with Elasticsearch. Uh, you, of course, should already have Elastic and Kibana installed on your machine, as, you know, as I went over a couple of lessons ago. Here I'm in the terminal. We need to fire up Elasticsearch, and then we're going we're gonna to need to start Kibana. So if you type in the ls command, we're in the home directory. And this is the Kibana folder, and this is the Elasticsearch folder. So let's navigate over to the Elasticsearch folder and just type in ls to see what's in there. You should already be familiar with this directory. And then we put bin slash Elasticsearch. And just hit enter. And this will initialize our Elasticsearch instance. It may take uh, several seconds to start up, but uh, eventually it will start and notice that it has begun, okay? So leave this terminal as is, all right? Don't make any changes to this terminal. Don't close it because that will close Elasticsearch. What we're going to do is open a new terminal. So just go to Shell up here. I don't know if you could see that, but it's on the top menu. Shell, New Tab, and just uh, open a new tab. And now we're going to start the Kibana. So to change directory, go back to the home directory. You do cd dot dot. Okay, you put cd, change directory, space dot dot, and that takes you one directory back. Type in the ls command and notice that uh, you know we're in the home directory. Now let's go to this Kibana folder, cd Kibana, and then do an ls, and we do bin slash Kibana, and just hit enter, and this will fire up Kibana. All right. So let's navigate over to that web page, uh, localhost colon five six zero one. Now that Elasticsearch is running. If I refresh this page, we should be able to connect using Kibana, right? So this Kibana instance is connecting with the Elasticsearch running on this machine. So let's go to DevTools, and here I'll show you the commands to be able to index documents into Elasticsearch. 
Now just to show you something, um, let me open up the terminal again. So we have uh, Kibana running here, and we have Elasticsearch running here, okay, in this tab. What happens if I end this Elasticsearch session? Click on this dot, it'll end that terminal session, right? It'll terminate that session. What happens to Kibana? Notice that it's saying that there's an error, it's giving warnings, all kinds of things. No live, no, no living connection. So basically, Kibana is running, but it's not able to connect to the Elasticsearch instance, right? And it's meant to run with Elasticsearch. So if I refresh this page now, boom, notice that it takes us to a different screen. I can't go to Dev Tools. It's just giving some information, but the most important thing to realize here is, look at this, status red. Right, and down here it's giving some other things. Unable to connect to Elasticsearch at right this this URL. This is where on this port Elasticsearch is supposed to be running, and right now it's it's unable to connect because of course we've terminated that session. So to bring that Elasticsearch back up, I'm just going to go to Shell and go to New Tab, and let's go to CD. Go back one directory uh, and go to Elasticsearch. And I have a habit of typing ls a lot so you know you actually it's not a bad idea just so that you know you can see exactly what the contents of the particular directory are before you run any commands just type in ls to see where you are and what the different files and directories are in your uh, in your current folder so let's kick off Elasticsearch now we're going to bin slash elastic search okay in just a few moments elastic search will kick off let's go back to the cabana window and notice it's still giving us all those warnings no living connections, no living connections, so on. So let's let's wait till Elasticsearch pops up here. There you go. Elasticsearch is uh, is you know it's saying starting. And there you go. It has it has pretty much started. So if you go back to Kibana, there you go. The warnings are are going away. See, it says status changed. Kibana index ready. So from red to green. So it turned this status from red to green, meaning that Kibana is now able to communicate with Elasticsearch. So let's refresh this page and notice that it doesn't show us that red status anymore. We're able to go to dev tools and, and, uh, and execute commands, all right? So this is where we need to be to issue any commands to Elasticsearch. So how do we index a particular document? Well, let's say we have a document that looks like this. Using the previous uh, syntax that I showed you, we're going to index this document. So the first thing we need to put command, and then after that we need the slash. We specify the index that we want to index into. So that's vehicles, and then we put a slash. Next, we need to give the type. So we do car. I'm going to be inserting a car, and then. Finally, we specify the ID. If you leave the ID out, it generates an automatic, it generates an ID automatically, but I highly recommend you choose your IDs wisely, okay? And you'll know what that means as we proceed in the course. So this one, I just named it one, two, three as an example. And now, after this uh, put command, we need to specify the actual JSON, the document that we want to index. That goes on the next line here, inside of these, um, you know, inside of these, curly braces. And I already have the fields copied somewhere else. So I'm just going to paste them here. And now let's hit play. And boom, there you go. This is the document that uh, gets returned from Elasticsearch, right? This is also a JSON document. As part of the response body, it sends us a JSON document. So we're going to be uh, sending data uh, to Elasticsearch using JSON syntax. And we're going to be getting data back from Elasticsearch in this JSON response, okay? So what part of this first section is JSON? It's just these inside of these curly braces. And this out here, let me expand that, uh, this is also JSON in the response. So there are certain fields in the response uh, JSON that are important to consider. Over here, uh, it says that the vehicles index was the one that the data was put into. And the type of the document that was indexed is car. Okay, so there's a type field, and the ID field is specified here with 123 because we mentioned the ID up here, okay? Uh, and then version, this is basically the first version of this document. If I 
uh, run this again, this will actually be updated to version two. And the more uh, uh, you know indexing I do of the same document over and over again, the version for that document gets incremented. And the reason for this is because we are actually overwriting the existing document. Right? Um, a document is uniquely identified by an ID, but also where it exists. So if the document exists in the vehicle's index that is of type car with the existing ID 123 and we keep re-indexing it, it's going to overwrite the existing document and the version uh, number is going to be incremented, okay? So it's important to understand it's going to be overwriting the existing document. So these are basically meta fields that are added to the document that we index into Elasticsearch, right? So this is our document, right? That's all we give Elasticsearch, but what it's going to do is going to tag on um, the index attribute, right? The, the type attribute, the ID attribute, uh, anything with an underscore is considered a meta field, meaning it's uh, basically managed by Elasticsearch. Other pieces to this uh, response is this shard field, shards. We'll go into shards uh, in a little bit, so don't worry too much about that for now. And then this created field, uh, this is just saying that, you know, this document was created, right? This is a new document that was created in the index. So if I run the same exact command again, I want you to notice two things. I want you to notice this version field as well as this created field. Both of these fields, the values are going to change. The version is going to be incremented and the created field is going to say false because guess what? This is not being created again. It's, it's you know, creation can only happen once. So let's hit play and watch the created field. It's going to change to false and notice that version is now incremented to two. Let me play that again, All right? Version is now three. Play that again, version is four. And because the ID is the same, the version number is being incremented. Even when you delete a document, the version uh, could be incremented. So that's pretty cool stuff. We'll get into the, all those details. Now, so that we have inserted this, or indexed rather, we've indexed this document into Elasticsearch. Let me get rid of this uh, command for a second and, and switch to the command called get. Everything else is still the same, I'm just changing this to get. And let's hit play. And notice that this gives us a response back. And this get command is used to retrieve the documents, right? So we're asking it to retrieve document with the ID 123. And that's this guy right here. This entire thing is our document, right? Elasticsearch added on these fields, you know, these, these meta fields, the index, the underscore type, underscore ID underscore version, and this uh, found field, as well as a source. This is the main thing. This is what we actually index. This is the document that we added here, uh, and we hit play. This is the thing that is our data, but Elasticsearch tags on all these other fields. Now, if I reference an ID here that doesn't exist, for example, one, two, we know when one, two, four doesn't exist. We only have one document. So let's try one, two, four and hit play, and boom, notice that this is uh, you know, pretty much em empty. It's saying that found is false. So this is a JSON response. Right? This is being sent from Elastic. Now, if I take change this back to one, two, three, and instead of the car type, I uh, choose the motor cycle type. Let's hit play. Again, there is no type motorcycle. Even though this document, uh, even though there is a document in this index, in this vehicle's index, with the ID one, two, three, it doesn't exist in the motorcycle type, right? So the found is going to be, of course, false. It wasn't able to find it. So we do have a document with the ID 123, and that is actually a type of car. So let's change that back to car. And uh, this is, of course, now going to return the data. And again, the source field in the JSON response, the source field is the thing that contains the document that we indexed, okay? Now, if we are only interested in getting this source document. We don't want all this other information in the response. All we have to do is in this get command, we actually put another slash and specify with an underscore the field that we want. So that's source right here. This field, underscore source. So if we hit play, now it only gives us the data that we indexed, okay? It doesn't return the meta fields in the JSON response. Again, so what's going on here? These are commands that we are typing in this Kibana console, and these commands are executed 
against the running instance of Elasticsearch that we have right here, right? This is running, it's accepting commands, and then it returns a response, okay? Every time we run a command, Elasticsearch gives a response back, and that response is shown in the on the window on the right, okay? Just to be clear. Now, going back to one, two, three, let me get rid of the source field here. If we want to check whether a particular document exists, we don't want the response, we don't want this entire response, we just want to see whether document 123 exists with the type car in the vehicle's index, there is a command called head. Just like that. Click the line and then hit play. And notice that it returns a 200 OK, which means that this document does in fact exist. If I reference uh, another ID that we know doesn't exist, such as 125, let's hit play and notice it's saying 404 not found. So this head command is there to just check for whether a particular document exists within our index. So changing this back to the put command, and we, we want to use a capital put. If I give the same exact document, like that, and let's change this back to 123, and I change one of these fields, uh, so for example, mileage was 24,000, if I change this to 19,000, it's not going to actually update this particular field only. What it does is it updates the entire document. Okay, That's important to keep in mind. This is very different than databases. In databases, you can update specific fields, update particular cells with new data. But in this, this is immutable. Right, A document is immutable, meaning um, you can't change them. Basically, we're re-indexing it. So I'm going to re-index this document with 19,000 miles. Uh, let's hit play and notice that it uh, did that. Now, created is going to be false because it's not a new document with a new ID. Uh, so that's going to be false and version has been updated. If I change this uh, from black to blue, again, the version is updated to 6. It doesn't just update this particular field. It basically takes the existing document, reads it, changes it with this new entire document, and then loads it back or indexes back into Elastic, okay? That's how updating documents in Elasticsearch works. The most granular level of operation is done at the document level, okay? The document is the thing that gets changed in, in its entirety. You can't just change specific fields. Now, Elasticsearch does have an update API, okay? If we want to update a particular field, instead of put, the method is going to be post, and after the ID, we put a slash underscore update, like that. And then we mention the word doc. Okay? And then after that, we wrap the particular fields that we want to update. Okay? So um, let's change the price. I'm going to get rid of this. And we'll change the price to, you know, 1,000.20. 1,020. And let's hit play. And notice that it increased the version. And look look at the result. It's actually saying updated. Same thing as it was showing before when we were using the put, that update was still there, right? But they also have this official update endpoint. And it honestly works exactly the same way, all right? It doesn't mean that this particular field got updated or anything. What happens is Elasticsearch reads the document, right? Retrieves the document, changes it completely, and then re-indexes the entire document, okay, with this new value for the particular field. If I change, let, let me add another field into this. We've changed the price to a thousand dollars and twenty cents. Now, if I add another field called name, or let's just call it driver because you know there must be a driver for this vehicle, and I'll call him, uh, I'll give him the name Tom, and let's hit play. And notice that you know the version for the document has incremented to eight. And now if I get the particular vehicle, let's go back to the get command and get rid of that update endpoint and uh, get rid of this JSON. We're not passing any uh, JSON anymore. Let's hit play and notice that we've got driver. The price for the vehicle has been updated. All right. So that update endpoint does exactly what put does in a way, right? If we execute put over and over again, the update endpoint, and by endpoint, I mean that the, the particular URL, this URL, uh, or partial URL, URL rather, uh, is an endpoint that is supposed to 
do something to this ID. If I put a slash underscore update or underscore source or something like that, those are different URL endpoints that Elasticsearch provides uh, for us to do something for this verb, this method. The update endpoint just reads the document from Elastic, merges it with the new doc fields, and then re-indexes it back. So still, the most granular level of operation is being done at the document level, not the field level. Now, what if we wanted to delete this document from this index? Well, there's the delete method, right? And we're basically saying we want to delete this particular document, right, from the vehicle's index. So let's just hit play. And there you go. Notice that it uh, deleted it. Notice the result. Instead of saying update, it's saying deleted. And notice that the version number has also incremented. Before it was 8, now it's moved on to 9. So if I try to get this document back and hit play, notice that the found field is going to say false because this document has been deleted. I want to go into a little bit of detail with regards to deletes. When we delete a document, we can no longer access it, as you can see right here, right? We're not able to read the document. But it actually still exists somewhere, okay? Not important to go into those details, but basically when we delete a document, Elasticsearch marks the document as deleted. And then every so often, behind the scenes, Elasticsearch collects all those documents that are marked as deleted and then completely wipes them out from the disk, okay? So this process of completely purging these documents actually happens behind the scenes. So from a user standpoint, when you delete a document, consider it deleted, but your uh, disk space will not, will not free up immediately. That's just a little bit of detail that I wanted to bring up to you in case you were wondering. Now, similar to how we deleted the document, we can actually delete the entire index by issuing the delete command on the index only. But you might be wondering, well, first, let's get rid of this 123 because that document doesn't exist. You might be wondering, well, can we delete the type? Right? We don't have any documents in vehicles. We only had one document that was with the ID 123. We deleted it. But can we actually delete this type? Uh, I'll show you what happens. Let's hit play. And notice it says no handler found for URI vehicles slash car and method. So basically, it's saying that, hey, what do you mean by deleting a type? <laughs> we can't delete this car type because no document exists that is of type car, okay? If there were documents that existed that were of type car, then this uh, delete command would make sense. But since those documents are gone, we can't just try to delete this type because it's an empty vehicle's index. It doesn't have any documents that are of type car. So notice how it's everything sort of related to the actual document and uh, its associated type. So if I wanted to delete this index, now this vehicle's index is a container. I can actually do a get command on this and hit play. The response on the right is actually the structure for the vehicle's index. Okay, when you just do a get command on the particular index, it just returns the structure for that index. Now we didn't specifically define this structure first. Elasticsearch was able to figure out based on the document that we sent it, what the structure of the document should be. This was kind of created automatically as we passed in a particular document. We'll go into the details of this structure, which was automatically generated by Elasticsearch. Notice the price, right? We had decimal in the, in the price, and it was able to figure out that the type was float, right? So that it can accept decimals. And the make, that type was, a, was actually a string, right? It was a textual data. So it was able to figure out, Elasticsearch was able to figure out that the data is of type text. Okay, so a lot of things were automatically figured out by Elasticsearch. We didn't configure these fields sp specifically. Elasticsearch was smart enough to determine what the structure of this index should be based on the documents that we tried to index. Okay, so now since there are no documents that exist, this is an empty index. And uh, right now it just shows the structure of this index. I can actually delete this index entirely and then just hit play and it says acknowledge true. Now if I try to get it, hit play, notice it's going to give me an error. It's saying status 404, so it's not found 
um, you know, root causes index not found exception. Okay, so notice how we're communicating with Elasticsearch. As a request body, we give it JSON, and as a response body, Elasticsearch returns JSON. All right, so that's your basic summary of how to use these commands, uh, how to uh, index data, how to uh, update data, right? We, uh, we basically index it again, the entire document will be replaced, and a version number will be incremented. And finally, we also talked about deletes. All right, so this lesson is already getting quite long. We covered a lot of ground. Uh, I want you to take some time to practice these concepts that we discussed. You know, create your own indices, right? I just named this vehicles and created a random car type. You know, create your own types. You know, create employees that are, you know, of type HR or that are accountant employees, right? You create your own types, create your own documents, test them out, insert them and delete them. Uh, and get that practice with these commands. You're going to be using these a lot in the course. But for now, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lecture.